Hi guys, MC Stu here, uh, back with another STO build video. Uh, today I'll be going over a budget Polaron build. I wanted to uh, put something together that uh, it's not necessarily you know free to play, quote unquote, but something that's easily obtainable for pretty much any player. Um, all the gear is going to be from Mission or the lower tiers of the trait system. Um, um, I'm sorry, the rep system, not the trait system. Um, in terms of traits, I, I was just talking with somebody about this. You know, I've spent a lot of time doing you know, completely free-to-play builds and things like that, and you can do okay with those. You can get through the content, um, but you know, to be honest, without having, you can have excellent gear, all epicked out, Mark 15, but if you don't have at least some of the Sea Store ship traits, you, you will never be able to maximize those. And so, you know, most everybody that plays the game got a ship token. They go on sale. If you like the game, you've been playing it a while, you know, spend the, you know, the, the token or the $24 or $30 when it's on sale, um, you know, and, it, it, you know, help support the game, number one. But also, you know, without having some of those traits, you will not be able to build, you know, things that are going to do very well if you're interested in doing that some people aren't interested in doing that and that is totally cool i get that. that that's no problem but if you're really trying to you know be able to run say advanced content and you know try and hit that 100k mark it's doable i've seen people even do it completely free um but it is not easy and you know a lot of it comes down to not just you know the build but the piloting and the stacking of the abilities and clicking the right buttons in the right you know exact minute and you know some of the people that I've seen do those kinds of runs with completely free to play builds. They're not doing it every time. Um, you know they're not hitting over 100k anytime they run in there. I mean the stars have to align to a certain degree. A lot of it depends on who else is in there with them if they're helping enough but not sucking up too much the DPS. Um, so in any case, uh, you know I don't want to keep going on and on about that, but I would certainly recommend you know at a minimum picking up like the tier six arbiter. Um, that is the that'll give you the, the ship itself is awesome um so it's a five three it's a battle cruiser it's an excellent ship you can basically do anything but a torp and side build with it i mean you can do a torp but it doesn't have uh command specialization seating uh but it's an excellent excellent ship um so if you haven't bought a ship and you're thinking you know i really like this game i've been playing a while um that that's definitely the ship to get it, it it's a it's a nice ship let me find it here uh, it's this guy right here the fleet version of it, I think, looks much, much cooler. Yeah, it's really, really nice looking. This thing's kind of weird. It's a space spoon or something, spork, I guess. Anyways, um, but that ship comes with the emergency weapon cycle uh, trait. And this trait um, you'll use on every single build you do, unless it's a torpedo build or a science build, most likely. Um, but on everything else, cannon, directed energy, um, this will be there. Um, this is the staple. It's it's going to be on every single build. And luckily, it comes on a ship that's good. <laughs> so I have a hard time buying ships that I'm never going to fly. Um, you know, so if I buy a ship, I want to be able to use it, and I want that trait to be good. So in any case, if you're wondering how to spend that, uh, you know, that tier six token you got, or you know, you're willing to buy a ship and you don't have any yet, or you don't have this one, I would definitely recommend buying that ship. Um, this trade is awesome, and the ship itself is awesome and extremely fun to fly. Um, all right, so th that's my rant there on the traits and spending money. Um, don't spend hundreds of dollars. You know, it's hard times for everybody. Um, but if you have a tier six token, um, or if you can't get it at all, I mean, you can still do these builds. You can still have fun. Um, but you know, if you really want to progress in terms of DPS, if that's what you're trying to do, and if you're not, that's totally cool as well. Um, I, I would, d you definitely want to pick up some, some ship traits, um, and at a minimum, the one from the Arbiter. Uh, all right, let's jump into the build. Um, so up front, I have four Dominion Polarons. These come from the mission Boldly They Rode. It is in the Lost Dominion arc, which is no longer in the episode list. You have to go to the Available tab, and it'll show up here, Boldly They Rode. It's the last one out of this arc. There's a bunch of good stuff in here as well, um, and they're, they're great story missions. I really enjoyed it, and I'm kind of a bummed out they pulled it out of the the rotation but at least it's still there you do have to complete galaxy at large and you might also have to complete uh what is it the cardassian struggle i don't think you have to i think you just have to make contact with the uh, the lady sitting in the middle of ops there 
and you also do have to complete the galaxy at large and turn that into um, Admiral Quinn on Earth space dock and that will unlock for you. Um, so play through that, you can pick those up. Uh, like I said, there's a bunch of other good gear um, in, in this arc here as well. So that's where those weapons came from. There are um, the, I like the procs on these and I know procs aren't a huge deal because they don't proc really as much as we like. Um, but um, I liked what they were called. They're a little bit unique uh, to me, so that's what I went with. Um, so I did have to play that mission four times, and you will start to hate Curlin, uh, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you haven't uh, played it and when you do. <laughs> um, but you can also get Polarons from, let's see here, that is going to be, not Age of Discoverer, where is it at? No, it's at the beginning of mine, because this is a Jemadar character. I think it's the second I need your one. Help with a very sensitive mission. A former Kai. The Alliance has agreed to a summit meeting with yep. us. First mission here. So you can also get just your first. standard, you know, Polarons with the standard Polaron procs here. And those would be just fine as well. Uh, if you wanted to mix and match, maybe do Despite two of these and, you know, two of the Dominion Polaron so you don't have to, you know, play the same mission four times, maybe break it up a little bit. Or if you don't have uh, those missions unlocked yet or haven't, it, I've had a couple times where it's been kind of difficult to get them unlocked. So even if you have everything open, there might have been something you haven't interacted with yet and you can't get to it so you can do um, just regular Polaron as well there's nothing super special about the ones that uh, that I'm using here um, next is the morphogenic torpedo this is part of the three-piece morphogenic set um, and I'm using this three-piece set um, for the three-piece bonus which when you click on any torpedo Ability, it gives you an extra, I believe, 7.5% damage, uh, stacks three times. Uh, when you click on any kind of beam uh, firing mode, it's going to give you additional crit chance. And then any kind of cannon um, firing mode, it's going to give you an extra 10% critical severity. Um, and those all stack up to three times, so that adds up to quite a bit. In, in boosting your critical chance and your critical severity. Uh, and I'll give you the exact numbers. Yeah, so it's 2%, so a total of 6% critical chance and a total of 30% critical severity. And then, what, 22 and a half of uh, weapons damage. This isn't a huge deal, it's only a cat one boost, so it's calculated on the base damage of the individual weapon as opposed to after all of your other cat one boosts like bonus damage would be. Uh, in any case, if you use this three-piece set at a minimum, you need to have both of these firing modes so you can take advantage of that. Next item is the Fleet uh, Colony Deflector. Um, this gives you extra critical chance and critical severity. Uh, it's an excellent deflector uh, for those purposes. The rest of the mods are uh, you know, probably a little more important when you're trying to min-max something on the higher end. This at Mark 12 in the very rare the way that it comes. Uh, has the same exact crit chance and crit severity boost on it um, so you do not need to uh, upgrade it if you know if you don't want to i mean i like to eventually upgrade everything but uh, if it is unupgraded for the purposes that i have it on here for that crit chance crit severity that is not going to matter uh, next i use the soul defense uh, set which comes from midnight from the iconian arc uh, you could use the three-piece set from this if you don't have this yet, and that'll give you uh, some additional bonuses. The Let's take a look at those. Oh, not upgrade. More detail. Here we go. So two-piece is going to give you quite a bit of extra resistance. And before anybody starts going on about you know resistance, diminishing returns, that is true. I agree with it 100%, but that does not mean that resistance is bad or a waste by any means. A high resistance rating is going to slow the the damage, you know, coming in and taking these hit points. Um, so, you know, the more you have, the slower this decreases when you're taking damage. This number is really high, and a lot of that is due to this set and some of the other consoles on here. I would not chase even on a tank numbers this high, because they are correct. I probably have enough points if it wasn't diminishing to where I'd have, you know, 75, 80 percent, but if I add another, you know, 20, you know, percent console, it's not going to translate into 20% onto these numbers. And that's what they mean by diminishing return. So if you're in the 30s, even the 25s, but 30, scratch and 40, that's plenty. You do not need to chase numbers this high. So 
diminishing returns is a real thing, and I agree with that 100%, but that does not negate um, the benefits of having decent resistance ratings on your ship. Uh, next is the warp core. This is craftable. Um, there's also some, I think, uh, older missions on the fed line that'll drop it. It's nothing super special. I picked it for the negative 15% um, power uh, reduction cost for your weapons. Uh, beam overload, uh, which is what this build is, um, that's going to be very beneficial. Um, so again, you can just craft this. You can get these pretty inexpensive off of the exchange. And again, that 15% is a baked in item. It does not change when you upgrade it. Um, so it'll be 15 at, you know, any mark that you get it at. Um, so very inexpensive. Like I said, there are some missions, but I don't think it drops that same item every time. So I would just pick it up off the exchange for, you know, 20,000 or craft it um, if you have that unlocked uh, would be the best way to go. Uh, in the back, I have a crafted Polaron Omni. Because this is a, a 5.3 uh, with a torpedo, um, I most like, you know, well, I will keep it forward facing for the most part. I don't need a broadside because of the morphogenic set. I basically have three omnidirectional weapons in the back. They can all fire forward. Um, if this was like a 4.4 ship, I probably would have mostly beams back here um, and these other, you know, this slot and the one that would be here in the back. And I would do more of a broadside and dip the nose in every now and then to get the torpedo off. Um, but because of the layout of this particular ship, I went with the Omni. Um, and again, that's craftable. You can also get it off this exchange for pretty inexpensive. Uh, next is the uh, kinetic cutting beam. This is from the uh, Omega rep. Uh, I believe it's from the second tier of it, um, and it's fairly inexpensive. These, uh, and let's just, so I'm not going to just make it up. Let's take a look here. Task Force Omega. Should still show me. Even, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. So we're 15,000 dilithium. So that's two days of playing, of refining. 500 uh, Omega marks, um, that's inexpensive. Um, you can do that very quickly. Uh, same with uh, with this item here, um, which I'll get to, but I'm using the two piece. Um, this item gives you additional uh, critical chance, critical severity, um, some control expertise, which really isn't a big deal, and additional weapons power, which is a big deal. Um, and then the two piece for this, um, essentially the, it gives you some drain, but the most important part is when it procs. So the two piece is actually a proc and it will uh, give you uh, additional uh, power cost reduction for your weapons. Uh, both these items are inexpensive. You don't have to have the little um, you know, processor nodes or any of that. So these are easy to get four days of playing. You could have both of those, those items, no issues. Um, and I have that slotted down in one of the science slots here. For devices, I'm using um, energy amplifiers. This gives you a plus 20% bonus uh, boost to your weapons. And uh, bonus is, uh, they classify it as CAT 2. It is calculated on top of, so your base damage from a particular weapon. So if I took this weapon off on the ground, that number you know is gonna be a lot lower. That number then um, is boosted by these items. They're not stacking. So each one of these is giving you that 30% on the base number of this weapon that you would see on the ground. So let's just say it was 100, you know, it was the damage output that it does. If you put on one of these, it's going to give you another 30. So that'd be 130. If you put on a second one, it's still calculated off the base 100. So you would end up with 160. Uh, that's how cat one damage works. Cat two damage is going to take that 160 from that previous example and give you 20% of that. So bonus damage, even in some instances where it seems small, it actually adds up to a lot, especially if you're boosting your weapons with, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, these are craftable and um, I would definitely recommend running these on, on your builds. Uh, this item is more of a placeholder, although I'm, I'm using it a lot more on some of my higher end stuff. The, uh, the little bonuses it gives you are nice. With the new X upgrades, I'm finding that I have just a lot of device slots that I never really needed. Um, so I've been playing around with this a little bit more. This came from an event. Um, and it's, uh, it's a nice little boost that, that'll give you there. It's not a must have. It won't break the build if you don't have it. Next device is the Deter Deuterium Surplus. Um, this comes from, it's a, uh, and I, I can't pull it up on the map because where I'm located, but if you look up this item, it'll tell you where to go. In the past, you'd have to go to this, this planet. 
you pick up the mission there, you go in, you fight off a couple Cardassian ships, and it would reward you with four or six of these. And had a 24-hour cooldown, you would have to go back and get more every day. They've changed it to now when you complete it once, it unlocks it in your crafting system. So now you can just make them at will. I would definitely use them. It's like having another, um, you know, invasive maneuvers. Um, it gives you the additional flight speed and turn right. Uh, nice item to, uh, to have there. I use it on pretty much everything that I can fit it in. All right, engineering consoles. This item is here uh, for the survivability mainly and for the flight speed. This comes from the New Frontiers, and I believe that comes from, it's not Melting Pots, I think it is Brushfire? Starfleet Intelligence has learned that yes. Martok and this item, you don't have to select it, it just comes Empire. default, and then you can select one of the other items. Um, it's up to you what you want to grab. I normally, when I run this on a new tune, I'll grab the... Um, this omnidirectional um, disruptor beam. If I, you know, decide I'm going to do a disruptor a build or something like that, it's nice to have. The two-piece between this and this console gives you uh, additional crit chance, which is a nice little boost. So on a uh, disruptor build, it synergizes real, real, real nice. So, um, so again, mainly for the survivability and also the uh, turn rate. Being able to maneuver and move quickly gets you from one batch of enemies to another. Um, and boost that overall DPS. Uh, DPS is damage per second. If you're spending a lot of seconds just flying from one place to another, that average is going to go down. All right. Uh, this next item here is from the Romulan uh, rep. It is also, I think, a tier two item. It's one of the lower cost ones at the 15K uh, Dilithium and the 500 marks and the main reason that this is on here is for the critical chance boost um, but also the extra power to all subsystems is awesome as well next item um, this also comes from the new frontiers arc there's a lot of good stuff through those for many different kinds of builds i normally use this item on a phaser build because the two piece for this is also a omni directional phaser which gives you extra uh, firing cycle haste which would be nice on a build like this but since it's polaron i'm not using that item uh, this is giving us transfer rate um, and then it's giving us uh, hull capacity and restoration um, so another survivability console here uh, this item i literally had nothing else to put here and i found uh, this in there Oh, let me jump back. Uh, so this item is from Beyond the Nexus. We recently received yes, a distress Beyond the Nexus. The USS and there's that Omni. The there's also um, the a uh, turret flavor uh, for that USS Omni if you're doing Madison a cannon build for Phaser. Um, but these are good items to have. I use them on uh, some of the, the top Nexus tier involved. builds as well. Um, this one comes from the Iconian Arc. Um, this is the name just slipped right out of my mind delta flight um, i literally had nothing else to put here and then this popped up it's not upgraded or anything it reduces your inertia it's a little less sliding around um, gives you flight speed flight turn rate and then it also gives you more uh, power to your engines based on um, so seven percent boost from whatever your weapons power is set at to your engines uh, so nice speed maneuverability console there uh, we talked about the the uh, Omega console. Um, again, I'm mainly here for the um, critical chance, critical severity, um, the drain and control. Don't really care so much about the uh, two-piece bonus, and let's just look at that. Sorry, I had to clip it there. One of my kids uh, interrupted me. Let's look at the two-piece from the um, assimilated module here. Um, so it, it, it's a chance it gives you, which is kind of a bummer for a two piece set bonus. But, um, if you do get it, having the, uh, the negative 500%, uh, power cost is, is nice. Basically you don't have any power cost. And if that can proc wild beam overload is going off, then that is awesome. When this power dips, that dips quite a bit of your damage output. Um, so having lots of power in here and power reduction, uh, when you're using your weapons, uh, is is huge, especially for beam overload, because that really draws from from the power there. Um, all right, 
This item is here for the critical chance, critical severity. That scales with where your auxiliary power is set. I'm kind of balancing mine a bit. There's a, quite a few consoles and for my skill tree that are putting extra power into my engines. Um, so I'm able to get away with turning those down a little bit and bumping up the auxiliary as much as I can. Uh, Cause I want that move, maneuverability, but I also want to get as much as I can out of this console here. Um, this console also gives you additional power to your auxiliary, so that helps even kind of boost itself there. Um, this console is also uh, a mission drop, and this is going to come from the Iconian arc, and it's going to come from the mission Butterfly. Let's take a look here. The research teams in the Kiana system require your assistance. They have been running thousands of there it is. Um, there are some. This is a three-piece set. If you're doing Tetrion, there's some interesting stuff here you can uh, you can take a look at. Um, but in any case, that is where that console comes from. Next, um, we have another rep item. This one is from the Lucari. And again, this uh, this one is a, a little bit more expensive than the other rep consoles um, because you do need to have um, some of the little special, they used to call them elite tokens, but you have to have some of this proto matter um, to apply to that. So if you run two advanced TFOs, um, Lucari related, you will get two of these. The rest of the cost of uh, this item is the same as all the other ones. So it's still just the, the 15,000 and then the 500 marks. And that item is it is there to boost my Polaron damage. Um, it can also be used on Plasma. It boosts both, both of those, and it's a pretty decent boost. It's a Cat 1, almost 40%. Uh, and again, we have additional turn rate, and it's giving us some additional uh, shield capacity, which um, shields really don't make a big, big difference at, at this point in the game. So that's why you'll see my power is all the way down, but there is some extra boost here, and that's from some of the other consoles. Uh, it's not intentional, but um, anyways, that, that's kind of the, the deal on shields. Uh, don't waste any kind of resources towards those at all, because they're not going to make a big difference. Next, I have, as Augie calls it, the Lorcator. Um, this gives you a nice chunk of extra critical chance, basically like having two of the fleet um, locators. Um, it also gives you some additional weapons power, which is always nice, and then uh, shield uh, penetration, which is, uh, is excellent. All of those items, except for the power, uh, do scale with upgrading it. Um, so this will come at slightly lower. I believe it's still over 3% even when it comes stock, um, but by upgrading it all the way, you can get it to almost 4% there. Uh, next item uh, we discussed briefly is from the Morphogenic set. Um, it's nothing real special. The only reason I have it here is because you need it for that three-piece set. It's worth taking up that console slot uh, for being able to boost that much additional crit chance and crit severity, as I demonstrated earlier. Um, you do get some uh, reduced power cost, which is definitely nice, and you do get some additional uh, Polaron damage, although it's not a real big, big boost there. Uh, and then I have just two uh, basic Polaron uh, uh, phage modulators, and these just give you straight cat um, damage boost, 30%. You can upgrade these and get them up to, I think it's 39. Um, so those are all the items. Um, they're all very easy to get, um, most of them of which are, are mission drops, and um, it, it actually performed pretty well. I, I, was, I was pretty surprised, um, had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I've always had a thing for, you know, trying to make something out of nothing and do, you know, the quote unquote free builds and stuff. Um, that'll bring me into the traits. So I am using a paid trait, and this is the emergency we uh, weapon cycle trait. Um, comes from the Arbiters I discussed earlier. Um, you need it. You need it on every ship you have, except for basically your science, in most instances, and torpedo builds. Um, this is probably the most widely used and useful trait that, that's out there. The rest of these are going to come from rep or from event ships, and it's basically just kind of what I had. So, I mean, there's nothing in here that's really making or breaking the build. Um, you can kind of look through these, look them up for yourself, or look at what you have is really most important. Um, this one is from Unlocking Strategist in the um, your specialization. It is very useful. Um, anytime you click the 
Brace for Impact, it's going to give you a nice little bo uh, damage boost, 20% uh, uh, Cat 2, uh, which is an excellent boost. It lasts for 15 seconds, and you can get that just by unlocking Strategist. Um, again, the rest of these, are they're, they're not make or break. Some of these are decent. They're a little bit pricey on the exchange, um, but it's nothing that you can't earn crafting and selling things or you know buying low selling high which happens sometimes if you know what to look for or running tour the galaxy um, you can make almost a million credits a day by spending 15 minutes doing tour the galaxy with the right build i have a video for that um, it's extremely inexpensive to do um, as well it can be done with all in-game items um, so in all of these traits that i'm using that are not stock which is the majority of them um, you can get off of uh, the exchange. Some of them can get pretty expensive. Some of them are less expensive or you can find them cheaper. But um, like this one here is giving me a 15% critical severity boost, um, which is big. Um, but again, it's not, it's not a make or break it on this level of, of build on the ship. So the main thing here is this guy, the rest of this is helping um, for the stock traits using fleet coordinator um operative and then the uh, beam training um, i would attempt to get and i'll highlight these you can kind of check them out yourself but i would attempt to you know pick up some of these um, they're helpful long term most of these are on all my other builds all my you know higher end builds um, so you know they're not single purpose things um, there are some trait, ship traits out there where you get it and it is for one specific thing. And that's where I really have a hard time spending the $30 or, you know, opening or a, uh, you know, lock boxes or something like that for just one thing. But, you know, this trait and these, these other ones, they, um, they're worth it and you'll use them long term. Uh, this is pretty much my standard setup for the most part. Um, so we're getting the 20% uh, critical severity. We're getting the extra 5% critical chance. This one was left over from when this was set up for tanking. Otherwise, I would be using this one here. So and the, this tanking one or the one I use for tanking, it was actually slotted when I did the run that I'll show here at the end. So bear that in mind. Get a little bit more bonus damage out of this depending on where your auxiliary power is set. Um, so probably would have done may maybe a little, little better with that. Um, and then we're getting the uh, extra 6.3%. Uh, bonus weapons damage and then uh, Tyler's duality is a nice trait based on your hit points it'll give you additional uh, critical chance so it scales with uh, with those hit points the maximum being plus 7.5 percent at 200 uh, hit points I don't think I've ever had a ship be that high but so even under 100 it's t it's still worth uh, 100 hit points it's definitely still worth having all right let's take a look at the stations here this is a little more direct on the build so as I discussed earlier I have a torpedo on there, so torpedo spreads nice, but it also procs the morphogenic set. I don't have any cannons on here except for that uh, morphogenic weapon in the back. When you activate any um, cannon mode or beam mode, it actually morphs into either a cannon or a beam. So you get a little bit out of this, um, you know, hitting multiple targets at once. Uh, but again, the main reason this item is there is to boost um, the critical chance and severity um, through that three piece. Uh, set bonus. Um, I have a polarized hole. It gives me a little bit extra um, of the resistance. So this here is plus 50 all damage resistance. If I click that, those numbers on my ship are not going to go up to, you know, up by 51. So let's see where they're at now just so we can. So let's we'll look at the first one, 43.1. And if I click that right now. See, I'm, I'm at 53. So that that's kind of what they're talking about in terms of the diminishing returns. You start getting a lot less out of that. And that was skill points and not percentage. And just so we're clear on that, those are two different things. But the, the more points you put in as you get higher and higher on the points, you're getting less and less for that. Um, that could not be on the ship and it wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. But I needed to fill that slot. So that's what I put there. Um, we have a tactical team using attack pattern uh, beta anytime I can use that it upgrades your weapons attacks uh, negative damage um, rating is kind of the main thing I'm after to your enemy um, and then obviously beam overload three this procs in the morphogenic set but it's also the main weapons attack that 
I put the ship together around. Um, all right, I have emergency power to engines, and I'll go over that a little bit more when we look at the duty officers. Uh, this is a must on pretty much all of my builds because there was a duty officer from the, and I'll just show it to you now, from the Phoenix packs um, under rare. And it's this guy here. And anytime you activate him, uh, it is going to recharge instantly your um, invasive maneuvers. So if you're timing things out right, if you're in the middle of using invasive maneuvers and you hit emergency power, it's not going to bring it back to zero. So you have to wait for this to end. And I'm finding I have to wait like another three or four seconds. But once I do that and then I click emergency power to weapons, it then cools this down again. So you're able to move fast quite a bit on top of having the uh, the duranium surplus here. So by having that duty officer and you know these three abilities, you can move quickly around the map quite a bit. Um, and he's pretty inexpensive, you know, a couple uh, Phoenix pack boxes, and uh, you should be able to easily get him. Um, and I'll, since we're looking at this now, this is really kind of the only two main things on here. I'm also using this uh, duty officer here. He actually slots in ground, but his, um, I do a lot of Borg TFOs is kind of the, the main thing that, that we do. Um, he, let's take a look here. So he gives you 5% damage to Borg. Um, he is a ground duty officer, but it is listed here where it works in space and on ground. So you kind of get a you get a twofer for it, but basically you're being able to get a space boost and not take up another duty officer slot, um, which is kind of nice. Um, again, that's from the Phoenix tokens from the rare the rare tokens. Um, so that's why this is here. Uh, this item gives uh, negative damage uh, resistance to uh, your enemies, and then it also um, takes away cold damage. If you use this in uh, damage resistance, that is. Um, if you use this in conjunction with very cold in space, that's a nice combo. So you fly in, you know, hit a cube with, with let it go, and then hit them with uh, very cold in space. Nice little combo. These come from the winter event, I want to say. I always get it mixed up if it's the winter or the summer event. Let's take a look here just so I give you good information. Events. I want to say it's winter. Which means it's probably not going to be. Nope, it is. Winter event. Uh, so these items, um, winter events about to start, so you can go run the duty officer missions uh, on the winter uh, wonderland map there, and you can get these items, you can get them really quickly, or you can play all the little games that are available on the uh, map, and you'll accumulate all these different items, and then you can purchase these um, training manuals. I don't believe they're locked to uh, account either, so they can be purchased off the exchange as well, but if you have any of these items laying around um, already from past events, then um, you can just claim them yourself through the event store all right emergency power to weapons this is giving us a uh, cat 2 uh, bonus of 16.6 uh, which is a decent sized bonus there it is also giving us additional weapons uh, power setting for 30 seconds uh, which is very good um, this is basically a heal I really didn't have anything else to put here so that's that's what I shoved in there. Um, hazard emitters. This is a nice cleanse, especially when you're fighting the Borg, but it also will proc an extra 2% critical chance uh, if you are running the Intel specialization. And we'll take a quick look at that here in a moment. I'll show you what we're running there. We talked about uh, cold in space and then photonic officer. I did a whole separate video on this. Um, if you don't have, you know, ox to bat um, duty officers or you know, you're, if you're using Ox to Bat, then you really can't use this item here because you're only getting that critical chance and severity off of having Auxiliary. And if you use Ox to Bat with the duty officers for cooldown, you'll deplete that and you won't be getting any critical chance or severity. So in the instance where it doesn't make sense or you don't have the duty officers to run Ox to Bat, you want to be running Photonic Officer. This cooldown uh, cools down all your bridge officer abilities except for itself or a copy of itself. So there's nothing you can do to make this ability cool down quicker. But while it's up for 20 seconds, every second you will get 3% off of the remaining cooldown time. 
Um, that adds up pretty quick and you're able to keep a lot of your abilities up um, much, much, much more often. So uh, definitely want to be running that for cooldown. If you want a little more detail on that, I, I do have another uh, video on that and I'll, I'll link it in the description for you. Um, so that is the uh, the bridge officers that uh, that I'm running. Uh, we went over traits, take a look at skills. Um, this is just a basic. It's not exactly a catch-all, but it's catch-all for DPS or tanking, really, is how I would put this one. Um, I don't have anything in the science stuff, which if I was going to go all DPS, then it would be basically Augie's catch-all, where it would include um, some EPG um, and some, some drain here. Not necessarily for science, but for proccing some of the uh, stuff you can do with torpedoes and other DPS builds. Uh, specialization, I would definitely be running intel and strategist if you're going to tank uh you're obviously putting together a different build and you need different uh, traits but you know it's miracle worker um if you're doing a torp build you know you could do um you know i guess you would probably do the same thing temporal uh operative like you would for science but in any case you know if you're doing a dps build um you want intel strategist those are the two that you're going to want there um, all right. Well, I think that covers pretty much everything. Um, this is my, my quote unquote free to play account. I haven't spent any money on this account. I've been playing it for about a year and a half. So I did get a tier six token. I have won some things, uh, and giveaways, stuff like that. Um, nothing huge, but you know, that's how I've kind of built up some of what I have. That's pretty much the only paid for uh, trait that I have, except for strike from shadows, which I won the ship for that. I did not include it on this build, although I would regularly, um, but I wanted to do it with kind of minimal of, um, you know, uh, sea store ship traits. Um, like I said, I, I kind of want to move away from doing the none because, I mean, you just can't really do that much. You need to have some decent traits to do decent things in the game. Um, so I've been playing him for about a year now, and so this is where my Endeavors is looking at, so not too bad. Definitely do these anytime you can. I've gotten a little lackadaisical on this and on my main account, but... Uh, they definitely pay off if you can start, you know, getting your critical chance, critical severity up and, you know, some of these other items. It's uh, it's nice to have. Um, all right. Well, I think that covers. Well, let's look at the duty officers. Um, some of these are kind of worthless. I mean, it's not worthless, but it's I could have probably spent more time picking duty officers that would complement this build even better. Essentially, the only thing I'm getting out of this one, anytime I use engineering, everybody on the team is getting some hull boost. Um if I were to spend more time on this part of it, I probably would have done three of these here. So anytime you use, let's make sure here, subsystem ability. Yeah, so anytime you use any kind of subsystem ability like uh, emergency power to weapons, emergency power to engines, um, it gives you a chance to cool down those abilities quicker. 30%, um, so 35% chance for 30% cooldown. So if you had three of those on here and you're using emergency power to weapons, and then you're also using your uh, emergency power to engines after that, not only is it cooling this down because the duty officer for, for that, this guy here, but it also would trigger three of these, which is gonna re-cool down, um, or re-cool down, it's gonna cool down emergency power to weapons three much, much faster. And so this ability runs for 30 seconds um, and the base cooldown's 45, so she just triggered. So I'm at 30 seconds right now. So if I have three of those, that's going to trigger every time, and this basically will stay up 100% of the time, which is huge. That's a lot of extra damage. Um, even just having just the one, you know, I see that happen. So um, had I put a little more time into this end of it, um, I would have went with three, basically, of, of her uh, removing these, these here, and then I probably would have done... I don't know, maybe I would have just left her and give us a little extra heal for myself and for the team as well. Um, but in terms of duty officers, this is how it was when I when I did the run. Um, some of these, like this guy here, he's not doing anything for me. Uh, this is a tanking duty officer. If you use reverse shield polarity or the feed, you know, feedback pulse, it gives you quite a bit of healing and protection. I don't have either one of those abilities on this ship. So um, definitely could have maximized this out a little bit more um with uh, switching a few of these out um and that's hit or miss because when you go into a tfo who you go with um you know you're randomly dropped in there 
and you might have guys that are flying across the map super fast destroying everything and you don't even get to shoot anything and so you know low dps or you might find that a bunch of new players or you know what whatever and and everybody's struggling and dying and you know it, it's a nightmare so a lot of it really kind of depends um had i had that in those three duty officers in the run that i'm about to show you maybe i would have got an extra i don't know 5k dps i'll just guesstimate it like that everything else remaining the same that is so um anyways you, you can put together you know decent stuff um with with out spending tons of money just get yourself you know at least that basic trait and um you know just build so your ship synergizes everything's boosting you, you know my polaron critical severity getting me around the map stick to that stuff you know don't don't go with the one-offs where it's like oh you know it'll do you know shoot lightning out its ass once you know and well whatever i mean that might be cool and everything but it doesn't help everything else it doesn't stack with everything else make sure your builds are they call it synergizing but you know er everything's helping boost you know particular things polaron critical severity uh, speed, move, maneuverability. Those are kind of the two things I focus on with most of my energy uh, weapons builds. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the run, and then we'll do a quick pass over the uh, the parse there and um, see how that turns out.
back here with uh, look at the parse. Um, so I am Omega One here. We did 89.9k on that run, which is pretty respectable for you know all mission drops, low tier rep items, um, and only one C store trait. Um, and it's not because I'm the best pilot. I mean, I feel like I know what I'm doing and where I should be, but uh, I'm definitely not the best at actually executing that all the time. Um, but in any case, it was a pretty good run. The rest of the team did pretty decent. If you're doing over 20, you're helping the team. If you're doing 23, though, you're having a hard time. And in some instances, it may not seem as fun. Uh, if you get you know, in a team and you're doing this and so is everybody else, um, that can turn into one where people start leaving and things like that. So, uh, 23, you know, that's, I don't know any of these other people, but you know, that, that's, that's good. Um, if you're getting, if you're doing over 20, you're contributing, uh, anything less, you need to really go back and look at your build because, you know, I, I'm, I'm no expert. I've just been playing for a while and, you know, I, I pay attention a lot to, you know, what some of these, you know, excellent builders are doing and, um, you know, so I have a decent grasp on, on what's going on and with what I just ran that with, you know, getting almost 90 K and anybody here can do that, you know, with, with no problem. So, um, we'll just take a quick look at the breakdown. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the spikes here. So the, uh, binary code guy, uh, he had a pretty nice spike there. Not too bad. Uh, it was better than mine. I was able to maintain kind of a consistent, damage output through it. You'll see that a lot will spike there right at the beginning. You boosted everything, you were running in there, um, and then it's kind of hard to maintain that. And that's where those cooldowns really come into effect. Photonic officer getting around the map quickly. So if you are, you know, taking 10 seconds to get across the map, you're going to see this really start to drop off. You start doing a whole bunch of damage. It's still down low because each of these points are damage per second, you know, ratio. So it's not, oh, I suddenly did a whole bunch more right at this second. That's, that's not how that works. That's how this works. Um, and that'll show you, you know, kind of your individual spikes uh, of your outgoing damage there. All right, on the breakdown. So we have our, uh, our total DPS. The run was just under three minutes, which isn't terrible. Uh, you know, a real high end run DPS is going to run you, you know, less than two minutes um, on advanced and even the same on elite, depending on who you're going with. Um, maximum one hit. It was probably the Polaron Torpedo, I'm guessing. Maximum one hit. Uh, that was from a pet. We'll have to look at that. But in any case, I'll just kind of scroll through this. I mean, there's not, you know, a ton here. You can kind of see what, you know, what everything did. Um, I am interested to see what pet did that. Max one hit. Wow. Nimbus Distress Call. I didn't talk about that, but that is a uh, mission reward from, that's from the Nimbus mission line. That one is not in the arc anymore either. You actually have to fly to Nimbus and talk to the guy at the gate when you enter, go through that arc. The last one will give you uh, that item. And that is this right here. And you can slot this without having it on your ship, which is nice. I have it right here. It brings in two Nimbus uh, ships. They heal you and they do uh, damage to the enemy for you. Nice little something to have uh, in your inventory there. Uh, let's pull the parts back up. Um, yeah, so not, not a lot more to say there. I mean, bottom line is, you know, with just a tiny bit of grinding and not spending much in the way of money, you, you can put together nice fun builds. Getting the items uh, can be fun, especially if you break them up a little bit on some of the ones where you have to run the missions multiple times. Um, that part can get a little tedious, so I suggest breaking them up if you don't have any of those items. If you have everything but the Polaron beams, then that might be a little bit of a bummer, but it's worth it. They're, they're decent beams. I have a build that I have, um, the, uh, you can get cannons uh, from that same mission, and th this is on my main account. Um, I ran it actually right before I shot this video here. And, you know, everything's epicked out, and I'm using top-tier gear, and I did 260 on that. But that was uh, four of the cannons in the front of that 5-3 ship are Dominion Polaron dual cannons from that same mission. Um, so even on, you know, top-tier ship, I'm still using the weapons on the front that I, you know, were, were able to farm from the Boldly She Rode mission there. 
So in any case, I, uh, I hope this, uh, this video was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you're looking for a little more advanced high-end builds, I definitely go check out Augmented Dictator, uh, Q Continuum. Um, lots of great content there. You can get good information, extremely entertaining. He live streams on uh, Twitch as well. Um, and I'll go ahead and post him and Augie down in, uh, in the, the uh, comments down at the bottom. Um, leave me a uh, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And uh, check in often. Have a good one.